Tonight, I am reading to you from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 for the launching spot of my Bible study. It's where Paul writes the final letter uh, of his ministry available in our Bible. It's written to Timothy. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. He said, I have finished my course, and there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. From the outset, I want you to know that Paul was running for a prize. He mentioned the prize with his finish. When we talk about living for Christ, when we talk about this apostolic lifestyle, we are speaking of a winning lifestyle. When we are running this race that Paul uses the word course for here, but we must concentrate on the finish and remember that we are doing this because the prize is great. We must not get distracted by present circumstances so that it takes our mind off of the prize. Paul said in another place, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. To those that live by the principles of the word of God, there is great reward. One psalmist said, in keeping of them, speaking of the law of the Lord, there is great reward. There is a prize, and I'm in this for the prize. Paul was in it for the prize, and you must be in it for the prize. In other words, we are going to live a winning lifestyle. We're going to do whatever it takes to win. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, and uh, he said this. He said, so run that you may obtain. That's what I'm trying to help you with today. I'm trying to help you with a winning lifestyle. Life's greatest step that any of us ever take is to step away from sin and to step to God. After this, we follow God as his word gives us the direction. You most likely have already studied the steps that we must take to be saved from sin. Once we have obeyed, that, that thing, the question arises, what is next? When God began talking to Saul, who later became known as the Apostle Paul, whom we read our text from a book that he wrote, Saul found the answer in Ananias' ministry to him. He was baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts 9 under the ministry of Ananias and went on to become a great apostle of the New Testament church. God's word, which tells us how to be saved also instructs us how to stay saved. Denominations of all kinds, church denominations, have certain rules. They have their regulations and codes of conduct for their members. In reality, though, our best source for how to live our life and win and succeed and get that prize is the Bible. If we follow the Bible's teachings and obey its instructions, all will end well for us. Paul said, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Oh, how I hope that not only I can, will be able to say that, but I hope that you will be able to say that also. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. That means I adopt a winning lifestyle. That means I use my Bible to try to figure out 
how God wants me to live so that I will be a winner like Paul was. Our destiny of heaven is not automatically secured just because we've been born again. The new birth is an essential step, but it is only the beginning of our race. Salvation is an experience that can sustain us for a lifetime if we grow and develop as God's word directs us. After we are born again, we discover the reality of devil, the devil's opposition to us. We will soon be well aware that we have an enemy of our soul who will tempt, test, and try us through every devious means possible. But you should not be dismayed, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, according to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. Failure is not inevitable, although Satan would like you to believe that. God saved us so that we would succeed spiritually, be victorious, or a Bible word is be an overcomer. Tonight, I want to introduce to you some basic principles from God's word as a support system for your personal experience of salvation. I have practiced these over my lifetime and observe them practiced in the lives of many others with success. There are no shortcuts. None of us is exempt. The rules apply to every one of us. None of us, none of us have reached our destination. We are still in the race. The road is not obscure because Christ left us an example that we should follow in his steps, according to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. I'm going to give pointers that are applicable today, not only to new converts, but also the experienced saint. We must never neglect these basic things. We are not all we will be or not all that we can become. Let us accept the challenge to live for God and to grow in him. Here are some sound biblical principles, which my, actually my personal experience over 48 years has proved to be true and good. They will tell you what you need to do. We begin with the scriptures and we grow as we follow them. And so the very first thing and the most basic thing that you have that is a key to spiritual success in your life is your Bible. It is the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We have the word of God as one of our most important tools, our Bible. As part of our Christian armor, as spoken of in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. It is vital to our Christian living. Begin reading your Bible every day possible. We gave a Bible reading chart out on Sunday morning. Again, let me reiterate that. Memorize those verses under apostolic doctrine and lifestyle. Make them a part of your life. Meditate upon those things. I take your Bible with you when you come to church so that you can look up verses that are mentioned by the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God. Bring a paper and pencil with you so you can jot down something that inspires you or piques your interest so that you will not forget it. And during the week, you can study that during your personal devotion time. Attend Sunday school and midweek Bible study regularly. If you've not been through Simply the Bible, a class on Sunday morning, or New Life Builders, become active in those classes. Every time the Word of God is taught or preached, 
It should build your faith and give you strength in the race that you're trying to win. Consistent and frequent interaction with the Word of God will open a door for spiritual growth in your life. Secondly, prayer. Prayer is a very basic thing, uh, and it is a vital key to becoming an overcoming or victorious Christian. Develop a consistent, increasing prayer life for your needs and the needs of others. Make it a daily activity. Pray with your family, if possible. Develop the ability to pray at length. Do not be discouraged if you can't, but a few moments uh, as you start out, but through experience and perseverance, learn to get into a place of prayer where you can spend longer amount of times than just a few moments. Go to church early and pray before every service. Use the prayer rooms if the sanctuary, for some reason, is not conducive to prayer. It will not only get you in tune for the service, but it will help all of us if you are praying before service. God hears and answers your prayer. Never be dismayed or doubtful if your prayers are not answered when and how you want them to be. Know that God hears every prayer you pray. Look up passage of scriptures related to prayer and obey those verses. In times of sickness, obey James 5, 13 through 18 by calling for the elders of the church or the pastor to pray for you when you are sick. Prayer is a vital part to your overcoming. Another thing is fasting. In fact, there are some things that a prayer and fasting combination requires and opens up great opportunities for us. Fasting is a powerful weapon and we must have discipline to fast, self-control, but rewards are great and we are in this for the rewards. Fasting is one of the best weapons to remain humble or obtain humility and to exercise power over Satan and temptation and to affect the lives of others. Fasting is simply doing without food or both food and water for a period of time. Commit yourselves to fast regularly. It's healthy, both physically and spiritually. Once in a while, go on an extended fast. Uh, that is more than one day at a time. And uh, as an effort to draw nearer to God. When I call for a special time of fasting in the church, observe it if there's any way possible because there is a strength when we as a people gather together or put ourselves together to in a united effort for a time of fasting. The fourth thing that I'm going to mention to you today is church attendance. No one succeeds in living for God if he or she is unfaithful to church. Church attendance should be a number one priority in your life. Remember, we're in this to win. We're adopting a winning lifestyle. And coming to church will only produce good things in your life. Regardless of the weather, and here we are today because it's icy and dangerous, we don't come to church. But if there's an opportunity, we need to get to the house of God every time. Regardless of the weather, regardless of who, who is visiting you on church day, regardless of other hindrances in your life, remember, you're in this to win, all right? The athlete who has company just drop in at the time that he's supposed to do training does not skip training to entertain company. Bring your company to church with you. Let your family know, even the unsaved guests that may come to your house, that this is our church day. Go to church with us. And that would be a good thing too. It'd be good for both of you. Be faithful in the house of God. 
There are verses I can I can put in to say this, but if you have more questions, certainly you can ask me about them. But it's important also, not only regular church attendance, but it's really important you have a home church. You have a place you belong, a place where you get your diet of the word of God. And we don't go through drive through windows on a regular diet and the spiritual food. But we go to a place where we are fed the meat and the milk of the word of God on a regular basis, knowing that it will strengthen us and help us to grow in the Lord. Attend every regular service in our church and every revival service and every special service. And whenever there's services at our church, you don't go to another church. This is where you eat. This is where you receive your spiritual meat. Even though you may like their program or their speaker better than the one that's speaking at home, better never let me find out. Only attend special services at other churches when you are not having services at your church. And by the way, be loyal to your home church. Don't let outsiders tell you about what's wrong with the church you go to and what's great about their church. Tell them, you know what? I get fed there. I get strength there. Be loyal to your local church. I'm talking about you having a winning lifestyle. I'm talking about you're in this for the prize. When you get to church, participate in church. Don't be an observer. Be a participant. Worship. Sit as close to the front as you possibly can. Get involved in the service. Ignore the distractions. Overlook the petty problems. And let God and his house be the center of your life. And finally, I'm going to mention witnessing as a key to winning. Salvation is the greatest experience of your life. Share what you have received with others, regardless of their race, their language, their, their religious persuasion, or any of those things. Never be ashamed of your personal experience and relationship with God. Our verse of the week, A, under apostolic doctrine, Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Do not be ashamed. Be a witness. You have a testimony. You have the answer. It is the gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation. Tell others what Jesus has done for you. And also, Live a life that speaks volumes to them about what God has done. Somebody, we used to sing the song, the kids did. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. And then they said, if you're happy and you know it, and your life will surely show it, or your face will surely show it. Somewhere or another, your testimony has to be more than words. It has to be your lifestyle. I'm talking about a winning lifestyle. Begin, try to get involved in teaching home Bible studies. Buy a chart, buy a study, learn how to do it. Ask, uh, ask for pointers. We would love to help you get started teaching somebody a home Bible study. And when you are a witness, be a, show a Christian spirit. Don't be argumentative. Don't be judgmental. Show love and kindness to whoever you are witnessing to. And also, part of your witness, be friendly to visitors at church. Shake their hand. Give them literature. Show them around the church building. And on and on. Be open and considerate of others. Pray with visitors who come to the altar. Be around them. Show support for them in that way. And finally, get involved in our church's ministries. There is a part for you to play in the body of Christ, a role for you to be. You are a member of the body. Become as soon as possible 
a participate, participant in the church's ministries. Join in and blend yourself in every church activity. Get involved. You will be quickly accepted and appreciated. There will be little problems that will arise, but don't let that discourage you. Church work is fun and rewarding, and you're really in this for the prize. Take an interest in the church property. I'm thankful for those that help keep the church clean, that do uh, repairs and build and take care of the yard and uh, whatever, sweep the sidewalks, all those kind of things. Take an interest in your church property. It is your church. Accept responsibility because you are needed and are important to the cause of Jesus Christ. Find your place and fill it well. Support your church through finances. There is a giving program in the Bible that's a part of the winning lifestyle that you need to become a part of. And when new people move into your community and want to make your church their church, accept love, introduce them to your church. Help them feel they belong and are part of your church and community. I have never seen anyone fail God when he or she keeps alive this plan of action in their life. Some of these steps require hard-fought battles, but they are well worth the effort. Remember, we are in this for the prize. So like the apostle said, I have finished my course. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I love the rest of it, and not to me only, but to all them also which love his appearing. Let's adopt a winning lifestyle.